I would like to welcome each one of you today. Uh, if you are from uh, Australia or, if, you know, a very good evening to you. If you are back here in Asian countries, a uh, very good afternoon to you. Uh, welcome to our uh, today's webinar. We are thrilled to have you all here as we dive into an essential topic, which is uh, student health insurance. Whether you are tuning in again, as I said, from near or far, we appreciate you taking the time to join us today. So usually um, health is often said to be our greatest wealth. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. And as students embark on their educational journeys, ensuring they are protected and well covered is more important than ever. Today, we'll explore how the right health insurance can be a cornerstone of a secure and a successful student experience. So sit back, grab your coffee or tea and get ready for an engaging session filled with valuable insights. Yeah, let's get started. Let me introduce you to our uh, guest speaker for our today's session, Mr. Uh, Swapnil Kamankar, who is highly experienced in, uh, you know, who is a highly experienced international partnership manager with a career spanning over 20 years in the financial services and insurance industries. Currently, in his 10th year at Bupa, Swapnil has, a, has played a key role in shaping growth strategies for offshore markets. So, uh, guys, please welcome Swapnil today. Hi, Swapnil. Thanks for the kind words, Bhavish. Uh, hello, everyone. Yep. So he will be our, uh, you know, the expert for today. He will be the person who will be guiding you through uh, to the entire process in terms of uh, purchasing a health insurance policy, uh, you know, for in uh, students who are willing to travel to Australia that way. And just a quick introduction of myself. Uh, myself, Bhavesh Ramani. I, uh, I work as a product expert at Konze India. And uh, it's, it's been good three years time for me since I have been uh, working in this company. It has always been a pleasure, uh, you know, to serve the education and immigration industry. And uh, I look forward to more such interact uh, interactive sessions moving forward. Uh, to start with, guys, let's uh, get, uh, you know, an overview of international student health insurance requirements. So since we have uh, Swapnil today, uh, Swapnil, we would like to know more about uh, the, you know, student health insurance requirements considering Australia as a destination. Uh, if you can just throw some light on that for us, that'll be really great. Sure. I think uh, one thing which I would want to cover is uh, most of the people when they come to West or, or they send their uh, kids uh, for studying, um, health insurance is a key requirement and uh, many look it at at insurance as an obligation more than as a responsibility or taking it for the well-being and wellness uh, i think that's where uh, that's where we need to cover a lot of things today and uh, give an insight on what the international health insurance really means uh, mm -hmm. for our international students uh, given that there are different categories of uh, insurances and providers available in uh, Australia and what it really means for a student and the well-being of their themselves, what it means for parents when they're sitting overseas and the peace of mind component in that. Uh, and it's it's quite essential because students who come from different continents and countries to Australia, uh, Australian medical system is very different to what we have in the rest of the world uh, or in uh, Southeast Asian countries or uh, subcontinental market. Uh, the concept of insurance here in Australia, it's not a general insurance product. That's what I want to highlight. It's more of a regulated product, especially by Department of Health. And it's a must uh, have a thing in Australia, even though Australian citizens and uh, permanent residents do get some benefits from the government for their uh, well-being and medical treatments. Insurance plays a very key and vital role in everyone, whatever stage of life you are in Australia. I'll leave it there and then we can go to the next one. Sure, sure. I mean, uh, very well said, uh, Swapnil. Thank you for, uh, you know, letting us know these requirements and giving us an overview. I'm sure uh, Australian government, I have been aware that, you know, they have always been... Uh, working in terms of the well-being of their citizens not only citizens even the students who are uh, you know moving to or right. migrating to australia so great great glad to get uh, you know these insights from your end uh, moving forward guys 
just to let you know uh, these are some major health insurance policy changes which have happened in the year 2024 okay uh before we start with i would uh, our basically our first pointer was uh, you know extension of the deed end date now i am not sure whether all the agents are aware of what deed is so so if you can just quick, quickly give sure. uh, you know an idea about the deed date uh as most of the uh, agents who are currently working in australia or they are offshore um onshore agents would have heard this term deed and provision in the oshc deed and it gets extended every 12 months uh, in a nutshell oshc deed is nothing but it's more of a commonwealth government regulation or a guideline for all health insurance providers uh, on how insurance for students particularly focusing on international students should look like what it should do what it should cover and how it is a mandatory requirement and what we as providers should cover as a responsibility towards these international students when they, they when they have taken insurance to come and study in australia uh, it all covers those guidelines and regulatory requirements and the uh, inclusions and exclusions of this insurance uh, only focusing on international students this is renewed every 12 months uh, and there are amendments that come that's why it's always valid till 30th of june and then it okay. goes uh, on renewal on 1st of july okay lovely i mean this is something even which i was not aware of to be very honest i am sure uh, you know a lot of people would have uh, gotten idea that okay what exactly the deed date is and you kind of explained it very you know in simple terms what all things it includes and what all things are uh, there so thank you for that and yes as uh, swapnil said uh, the deed for the provision of oshc which is overseas student health cover has been extended from june 30 2024 to june 30th 2025 as you know since this is something which kind of uh, you know renews every year okay now the other uh, major update is that transition from oshc which is overseas student health cover to ovhc which is over overseas visitor health cover okay so the international graduates applying for the temporary graduate visa sub class 485 need to switch from from oshc to ovhc to meet health requirements this transition ensures that graduates continue to have health coverage while they stay in australia post graduation so this is also one of the updates which you guys can take a note of uh, i'm sure this will be really helpful so april would you like to add something to this sure um, i think um, as as a journey for a migration uh, and an education agent um uh, it's it's very important uh, aspect that when they are sending students or they are counseling students to come to australia to make them understand what their life and journey in australia would look like when they are coming as a student and how they can move to 485 or transit to the post study work uh, visas that can help them to work for some time in australia and again during this transition what would they foresee both from the insurance perspective and from their migration perspective and what it really means for them um, and we as a insurance provider we would want to cover all of these aspects when they come to australia right from their life as a student then their life as a working individual and then when they move to family uh, and you know get permanent residencies or temporary residency whatever we want to be a part of that journey throughout and support them right from the beginning so it's it's quite an important transition piece from an insurance perspective as well for us uh, and for students to know that as well lovely i got this even more clear now after you explained it so thank you for that and yeah i mean this is for uh, both you know the agents which we have today even you are on show or off show this is the very important update which probably you can you know take a note of okay moving to the next point uh, which is policy flexibility and as the name suggests uh, there have been efforts to simplify and clarify the language of the deed to make it easier for insurers and health care providers to communicate with the policy holders this includes modification to assist with transitioning to ovhc and private health insurance policies yeah i mean sometimes what happens is uh, you know if i am a student you know uh, i will not be very comfortable in uh, reading out the deed or uh, proof reading that for myself and even sometimes the agents get confused you know uh, that okay what exactly does it mean they have to probably just 
uh, check up with a legal person to get more idea on it. But this is a very good good decision uh, in order in terms of simplifying the language and presenting in uh, presenting it in such a manner where uh, all the people associated with are able to understand. Uh, what says Swapnil? Very true and very rightly pointed out. Uh, I think deed is not for um, everyone to have and read. It's a legal document. It's quite extensive. Uh, it's an open source document. Anyone can find it on the internet and read it. Um, it it's a government document. Uh, how much of an understanding one would get from the legal document as a student is a question to be asked to a particular student and I'm not challenging anyone's ability there, but uh, it's it's quite a complex document. And uh, I think what one should focus on is the requirements from the provider. I think the TNCs within the health insurance for any provider, including ourselves, is quite clear. Uh, we, we try to keep it as simple, as clear as we can, uh, because we do understand for an international student having understanding or knowing about their insurance is their last priority uh, not for their parents as much but for them it is because they're settling down they have a lot of things they have coursework uh, they would only basically look into this when there is a need so we try to simplify this document and give them as many tools as possible uh, to to understand this but it is good for you as a uh, counseling agent or a uh, person who guides them through the very initial steps of coming to australia to uh, to tell them what it really means uh, simplify this in a way that there is a deed there is a regulator uh, to to keep a tab on all these things that happen uh, and uh, it's not that providers have their own way and uh, things to do uh, it's it's we are governed by a particular governing body uh, which we have to abide to uh, and that then the transitioning part is also critically important because most of the students they think that once they have completed their student visa and move to a work visa they really don't need insurance but there are conditions on their visa that they must carry one that's one thing but also uh, one must be aware and again uh, we, we heavily rely on partners like yourselves to uh, educate the students to tell them that you're far from your home country if something goes wrong uh, medical treatments in the western countries are not as cheap and as easy uh, it's always better to have some sort of an insurance and that's what insurance is for that they have to cover their out-of-pocket expenses uh, not pay from their own pockets and uh, explore all their savings into one particular treatment and then have left nothing. Uh, and that's where I think it's important for them to transition from the student cover to the working visitors covers or any other insurance which is suitable for their visa subclasses when they are staying abroad. Yeah, I mean, uh, makes sense, man. Uh, if, if I'm a student, uh, I would rather be anyways tense if, you know, I'm traveling to or migrating to a new country. I don't really want to fall in all these things, but yeah, if some agent is actually, you know, like letting me know uh, uh, if he's reliable enough to give me the exact information, I'd be more than happy to, you know, uh, get some idea. And I'll be, I'll be anyways referring to that particular agent because I, uh, you know, that gives me more confidence and even I can transfer that confidence to the other people as well. So that's true. Yeah, greatly explained. Uh, lovely. Okay, moving uh, to the last point, uh, one of the major updates, which uh, is uh, the coverage adjustments. Okay, the policies now offer more flexibility, including critical incident funds and expanded areas of coverage. Okay, I uh, I, I got to know a basic idea of it, but then yeah, Swapnil, if you can just throw some more light sure. on this. I think. Um... The critical incident fund or or you know additional coverage or coverage adjustments is something that we really would want to um, highlight because there is a certain component that is not part of the core covers uh, when the students take this insurance. Uh, it, it would mean that students can basically have the core cover that covers them for hospitals, emergency treatments, doctor visits and any pathology tests and things like that. But things like dental, optical and those things they can be taken extra uh, those are the services that can be taken extra uh, about the critical incident funds and those things they are mainly the part that come if they have taken a cover from their university or institute and things like that we have different arrangements for uh, different options and different covers so it really depends where and how they get the policy uh, Institutional covers are slightly different to what we offer in the agency market space and the distribution space. Uh, but what it means really is 
they may in some other other way be able to explore that option. So it's always recommended that once you have done your due diligence, you've referred them to a provider like us and they've taken the insurance, we highly recommend the students coming back to us to understand if they need to know more about their cover and add extra benefits on their cover if there is a need and we can guide and assist them with that. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, yeah. Uh, I think uh, these important updates have been anyways made considering the, you know, well-being of the uh, insurance holders. And then, yeah, as expected from the government of Australia, this is something which they have been doing. And again, one of the good updates which have been, you know, brought into the picture in this current year. Lovely. So I hope everyone was able to get an idea on the major health insurance policy changes which have happened in this year. Uh, moving forward to our uh, next topic. Okay, so uh, Swapnil, I mean, uh, talking about myself, uh, always I have, uh, you know, uh, had these questions in terms of uh, insurance. Uh, there are some, even though they are basic questions, but then I've always doubted whether uh, this is true or, you know, whether this is something which I can rely on. Since we have you here today, I want to make the most uh, use of it. So, we can see that you know there are some common misconceptions basically while uh, even a student is looking for an insurance policy or even if the agents are purchasing on their behalf so yep. uh, it will be great if you can just guide us properly so that uh, you know we can uh, uh, not change our focus to the other pointers but then we can just you know stick uh, to those important ones yeah Definitely. Th thanks, Bhavish, for bringing this up because uh, I'm sure there would be a lot of questions uh, that we can see in the chat uh, or in this regard that all yeah. health insurance plans are the same and you know all policies are easily upgradable. Um, there are yes and no's to uh, both the things, uh, whether, whether we have... Uh, let's start with the first one and then get uh, one by one into that. So uh, are all the health insurance plans the same? Uh, most of the student plans, yes, they are. But what I would say is, do they give the same benefits? The answer there would be no. Uh, again, because of OSHC deed, most of the providers do have to cover essential requirements for health insurance for essential uh, treatments in Australia. Uh, but do they cover 100% of it? The answer would be no. Some providers do not cover everything. Uh, they only cover up to 80% of certain services. They only cover up to uh, a particular uh, service. They may not cover all the services. So, so there is a gray area sort of a thing. And uh, that's where I think we should look into their product statements and uh, product sheets to understand what are the inclusions and exclusions in each provider's policy. Now, are all policies easily upgradable? Most of the student policies are not easily upgradable. Uh, they have to have a valid proof when they are moving from one provider to another. So they cannot simply switch off or leave the insurance uh, without giving a valid reason to the insurance provider. So if they want to move to a particular person or a, a level of cover, say for example, they are currently single and they expand their family, they get married, they get their wife on the uh, insurance and they want to upgrade that, that's an easy upgrade. It's it's basically simply adding a person to their policy and paying extra premiums. That's as simple okay. as it can get. But if they mm -hmm. want to add certain benefits and they realize that the provider or the policy they are with doesn't cover X, Y, Z things and they want that and the insurance provider who they are with or any other provider in Australia is going to cover more than what they currently get, then they need to have a valid they can purchase the insurance, but then they leave that insurance company, which they are originally with. They have to provide the proof that they have taken another insurance. If they decide to do anything like leaving the country, they still need to tell the insurance provider. So it cannot be canceled just by saying that I don't want it. There has to be valid documentation to support all the upgrades or moving forward uh, to change their level of covers as well. Um, uh, this is the hot favorite. I think lower premiums means better deals. Uh, Again, as, as we touched on the point one, uh, no, not really. Lower premiums means not better deals. Lower premiums means you are getting covered for less or you may not be covered for everything that uh, a expensive uh, or a higher premium company would be covering you for. And there is a very valid reason that if they cover for everything in the low cost insurance, they 
it's hard to sustain into the market uh, because the amount of claims and the medical expenses that we have and OSHC being the nature of the cover is a very close-ended cover. So from a provider point of view, once we get the premium, it's not a recurring payment. We have to make pay the claims, whatever the claims are, no, no matter the value of the claim. And hence, lower premiums doesn't mean better deal. Lower premiums means low cover. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, talking about the lower premiums, I mean, if I'm a student, let's say even my parents, uh, while they are willing me to, you know, migrate to the other country, they would definitely want me to be secure enough uh, and, you know, do not land into trouble. And as you said earlier, Swapnil, that uh, uh, the medical services in the, you know, like countries like Australia or any other destinations, they are pretty expensive. Even if, yeah. if, I, if I even if I want to call an ambulance, you know, uh, we have a, 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 you know a special charge for that, which is a slightly higher rate. But then if you are actually under a proper cover, uh, it is just the one-time payment which you have to do. So instead of sticking to the lower premium rates, it will be great, guys, if you can uh, even think of the future. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, I mean, the, you know, the sickness don't uh, come uh, like they, it, it won't tell you when come. So it, it'll just come in a sudden way. You can meet with an accident. You can, you know, fall sick like that. So please even educate this to your uh, students as well who are traveling. And I'm sure it, it'll be a really helpful uh, suggestion to them as well. To get the parents involved when we are talking about insurance as a discussion, uh, because students would want to cut a corner to save some dollars and save some money. I don't think the parents have that mindset because uh, I myself was an international student in 2006, 2007. I went to London to complete my master's. And um, I think my, my, my parents were not too bothered about the insurance component uh, when, when it came to pay for that insurance. And that was at the very bottom of my consideration because um, as a young student who wants to go, we are very excited to go out and explore the world and study there and do things and save money and everything. But I think parents know um, how important it is and what the peace of mind for them is. Um, so I would always recommend that get them involved when you're in the offshore market uh, as much as you could uh, in other decisions. Uh, that really helps them to understand the value of this product. Uh, not from the business perspective, but I think it's more from their peace of mind perspective as well that they would be able to uh, rely more and have that peaceful uh, night's sleep that they are, their kids are well covered and they are well looked after if they have a right product when they are in their foreign country. Yeah, yeah, very true, very true, Swapnil. Uh, thank you for the summarizing this. And I'm sure, I mean, even the agents back here would agree on that. Uh, it, it, it is definitely great to, you know, consult someone uh, uh, with a knowledge wherein uh, they would rather thank you once they land into trouble if they have, uh, you know, a right cover for them in Australia or any other country. And uh, yeah, I, I think that is what makes you a reliable agent that way. Okay. Uh, moving forward, guys. So, uh, yeah, I mean, since we are talking about Australian health insurance, uh, you know, in our session today. So we will get, quickly get an idea in terms of how does the healthcare work specifically in Australia, you know, as a destination. I'm sure every country has their own, uh, you know, set of rules and regulations which they follow. Uh, but yeah, uh, since since we have Swapnil today, uh, he will probably give us uh, some more idea. Uh, and I'm sure even a lot of doubts which you guys must have in your minds that, okay, how does the system works? Uh, I would like to know about this. So uh, a lot of things will be definitely clarified. Uh, over to you, Swapnil. Thank you, Bhavish. Uh, and I think this is a, a very uh, great uh, slide to understand how the Australian health system, as I, as I said very earlier in my uh, when we started the presentation, that uh, it's it's very different the way Australian uh, health system works uh, compared to the rest of the world. Uh, and the only reason is um, most of of you might not have heard of in the offshore market what Medicare is, what our public health care system is, and what private health insurance is. So in short, what we see on the screen, the green card is the Medicare that is only given to Australian um, citizens and Australian permanent residents. Um, it has uh, also been given uh, to few countries that come from we call it reciprocal arrangements. So for example, if somebody is coming from the UK or any other country that Australia has uh, a partnership on their health uh, related 
uh, treatments. So any Australian traveling to that country would be covered by their local government insurance policies and we would be doing the same for those countries. Now, uh, the, the easier way to split this is public health care system or Medicare as we all know that in Australia uh, is, is mainly cover uh, that gives a kind of a service that is given to all the Australians who go to see a doctor. They mm -hmm they go into a public hospital. So it's more of a public system. Um, they, yeah. they don't have to pay most of the times if they go and see a doctor in Australia. If they go see a specialist, if they go do a blood test or a pathology test, most of those things get covered and we don't pay anything out of pocket. If there is a life-threatening treatment or an, an, a, an a illness or a chronic illness that is also covered in hospital into a public system, which means most of the Australians from their tax pay payments, that's a part that they get uh, when they are uh, when they become a permanent resident or a citizen of Australia. Now, as opposed to that, do we Australians need private health insurance? Yes, we do, because as I said, only life-threatening treatments or emergencies and doctor visits are covered. But if there are some non-life-threatening treatments, what do we do as uh, an Australian citizen? We rely on private health insurance. So we can be covered through that into a private hospital or as a into a public hospital as a private patient. But what happens to someone who comes without being a permanent resident or a citizen of Australia before they turn the citizen or they apply for permanent residency? They are non-residents for Australia, but they are international visitors. Either they are working, non-working, or they are students. Now, with these three categories, they don't get entitlement to be under the scheme that is the Medicare. Now, for that, they would need to see a doctor if due to a sickness or due to an accident or an emergency or anything like that, or they might need to use an ambulance service. We don't know. Life happens. And, and that's where private health insurance becomes a very crucial element in their lifestyle. And we do cover all the cost that one would be covered under the Medicare but we would cover all of that into a public and a private hospital under the private health insurance system for okay. anyone coming from overseas under these three visa categories. And we would look after their ambulance treatments, pharmaceuticals, pathology tests, doctor visits, specialist consultations, as well as their uh, hospital uh, treatments as and when required. So in a nutshell, that's the difference. Any questions you have, be happy to take on that. Uh, but this is what a stark difference is between having a private insurance and a Medicare. Okay, lovely. Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of points even uh, got cleared uh, while you were explaining uh, the difference between both, uh, uh, considering the residents of Australia or the citizens of Australia, and uh, looking at the, you know, uh, you can say the visitors, the students, which are uh, usually on a short term or even on a long term trips. Uh, what should and what is ideal for them and uh, how uh, exactly the you know private healthcare uh, uh, companies in australia are even uh, you can say helping them uh, throughout their uh, journey while they are in mishaps uh, great great to know that and yeah as swapnil said feel free to drop in your question guys in case if you would want want to know something more about this we can even take these questions uh, in our last session, uh, you know, at the last the session, last of the session as well. While we conclude, we have a special Q and A uh, round for you guys. So uh, feel free to jot down your questions in the meantime. Moving forward, guys. Uh, okay, I, I think uh, this is something which is always, uh, you know, a question for uh, the agents, uh, which is choosing the right health plan. For 2025 intake, I, I mean, the 2024 is something which is about to, uh, you know, wrap up. We are already in the ninth month of this year and uh, the Jan intakes, you know, the other intakes for the 2025 are, uh, you know, on the peak. So I think even uh, agents would like to know more that, okay, what will be the good, uh, you can say, or the better choice in terms of if they are willing to purchase an insurance for uh, their students or the visitors like that. Of course, Bhupa, there is no second thought on that now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no, I think, see, uh, while choosing a health insurance, there are a few things that, uh, that uh, are key um, that you should be looking into uh, health insurance. Uh, one is, uh, and most importantly, um, nobody talks about it, but we do emphasize very strongly on uh, mental health services. Um, 
reason being once you are away from the country you don't know uh, what what goes on in the mind of a particular student they're quite young sometimes they are we, they are in mid 20s we think they are matured but leaving the comfort coming out in the uh, in the outer world uh, not knowing the way things work and function here this can get quite stressful um, what we've done to support that we have removed any waiting periods on mental health we have multiple uh, other options that we we look into that uh, it's it's sometimes it's a taboo and people don't want to talk about it uh, they don't understand whether they are anxious they are stressed they are depressed uh, and there have been cases uh, in the past where uh, people have taken very drastic steps uh, in students and uh, committed something that they shouldn't have um, and at and it gets very painful for the families afterwards to live with that fact that they are no longer there um and that's where i think we we are a big advocate on that um yes we we are a health insurance provider but uh, we do go by a motto of living healthier happier and longer lives and that's where i think um it's very crucial for us to support we do and today is the day that you know we ask are you okay day uh, in australia and we strongly at work and everywhere support our uh, colleagues and also the students uh, with this so it's it's a very important part that one should look into uh, what kind of mental health support because it could be exams it could be anything that they could be stressed with you don't know you're you're far away from them uh, there are different time zones they can only talk to you you know for a certain amount of time they don't have friends they're doing juggling lot of things so so we we want that to be very out and clear that yes you can look into that whether there are waiting periods what is covered what is not covered and mental health service is a very crucial part of the insurance service of course of course okay i think uh, as important as physical health mental health Correct. also plays a very crucial role especially Correct. you know looking at the generation as well as the young people who are uh, living behind their country and moving to a new country i'm sure as you said a lot of things come into you know come into their mind while they That's are right. going to the university while they are working so uh, this is uh, really you know you, i i i would definitely recommend even from my end as well that okay this is something which should be a very key feature which one should look to purchase a policy in and other than that i think uh, what one should be uh, considering is what are the additional benefits uh, what are the preventive cares what what is that we would cover uh, as a value added service to the to the student or to the insurance holder uh, it could be as simple as they don't need to go to the doctor whether we have any digital uh, tools and apps to help them whether we have any telehealth services uh, whether we we do any wellness programs um, and and all those things because they they also all tie in together with the first point that we talked about the mental health but also to do certain things that would help them to avoid a, a particular illness or treatment to overcome uh, and with these wellness programs any preventive care programs we have in house services we can help and support them uh, it's as simple as being mindfulness making sure that they they go through um, those videos and things and do a meditation of 10 minutes and those kind of support yeah. elements so other than insurance what is that we can do is what i think you, when when you are advocating for a particular student or counseling a student that's important for you to understand what additional benefits they would get how is the footprint of the insurance provider how many stores what kind of contact centers or call centers they have what kind of you know uh, footprint they have in australia that really matters a lot because it just makes them a uh, ease of accessing that provider and with the multiple touch points not just with one touch point oh that's true that's true i mean uh being someone who is very new to the country they would rather prefer you know a provider which who That's are right. easily accessible uh you know they do not really want to just uh, uh you know be around the circle and chase the providers rather you know if they have someone who is very easily accessible to them i think that is something which will bring the peace to their mind there is always a, a question mark on what is an emergency service i think uh, it's as simple as uh we can make it and any emergency service which means is if it's a life threatening incident it's a road accident it's anything that they are traveling around and uh, they they don't know let it go to the paramedics or or to the ambulance services to decide or the doctors to decide whether it was an emergency or not emergency we do cover a lot of things in under this uh, tab so if they have 
the, there is no doctor uh, available. It's after hours. They can go to an emergency service. If they are hospitalized, we will cover all the cost of uh, their treatment. If they are not, they might have to pay out of pocket, but it's always better to be treated. Uh, there is a number called triple zero in Australia. Uh, if if they don't know, we recommend them to call triple zero and call an ambulance or talk to a doctor or explain their situation, whether it's medical, non-medical, or they need police, fire, fire brigade, anything, they can just simply dial triple zero and they can do that. So that's one thing. Uh, other emergency services is uh, the confusion about ambulance services, whether we are covered for one emergency service or two emergency services. Again, I would say that there is no limit on emergency services for ambulance if they need. And if it's a life-threatening situation, there is one non-emergency that we cover. So mm -hmm. if that happens in that one calendar year when they are in Australia, I would say that just pick up the phone, call the ambulance, and then leave the rest to the insurance provider. And if there is a small out-of-pocket, that's okay, but at least they are safe and sound. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, again, this is also one of the you know important aspects if you are uh, willing to go and purchase a yes. health insurance for you or even for your uh, you know students that you are uh, consulting. Yep. Okay. And I think this. Yeah. no worries, Bavish. Pleasure. Uh, I think uh, coverage on pre-existing conditions. This is again uh, something that is very different to what happens in the rest of the uh, part of the world, uh, where Australia is an exception to that. We don't exclude anything, whether it's a pre-existing condition uh, or or we don't say that we will not cover the following year if it has become a pre-existing condition. Australian system works on a community policy, which means we are always going to cover a pre-existing condition, but it might come with a waiting period. So for example, if somebody is already going through a treatment or they have been diagnosed with a particular condition and they come to Australia and they want to be covered for it, there might be a 12-month waiting period for things like uh, pre-existing conditions, which would be defined by the doctors. We don't ask any questions when they are purchasing the insurance. So in a nutshell, they can basically be uh, covered for anything and everything uh, that is covered under Medicare and we will pay for those things but there might be small waiting periods on that. Yeah I think uh, again the consultants can definitely take a note of exactly. this because you might have a lot of students or visitors approaching you uh, they might have these questions in terms of Correct. you know what is supposed to be done when you have a pre-existing uh, yeah. you know health condition. So great uh, I mean this is something which is also very informative uh we can uh move to the next the fee, uh, you know the key feature which one should look over to you Swapnil again thank you um i think we, we've covered this one uh, as well that comparing different health insurance plans and their coverages and also uh the whole the point of this slide is uh to understand what each provider would offer uh as we covered in the previous slide as well that there might be small changes and caveats and conditions that may or may not be covered or may not be covered 100 percent and uh, most of you would come across a, a common jargon called MBS. Uh, MBS is nothing but Medicare uh, benefit schedule fee, uh, which means Medicare, which has with the green card that we saw in one of the slides, defines the treatment charges for each particular treatment in Australia. And we as health insurance providers, we have to abide by that. And we will pay 100% of the cost that is covered by Medicare. Some providers may not, some would. Uh, we do cover 100%. We don't have different charges for uh, a service or some, anything like that when it comes to OSHC. So it's very important for one to look what is covered and what is not covered. Of course, of course. I, I think uh, people, uh, you know, should definitely compare the, you know, uh, insurance providers because let's say if an ex provider is giving, uh, you know, a, a particular uh, health coverage at a very low premium rate on the uh, rate, sorry, on the other hand, if the other one is, you know, charging more. So you should actually compare all the facilities, all the Correct. features, what, what they're offering. And I, I think that is the ideal way of consulting someone, you know, and that's right. Are, and, yeah. and see, it would suit someone to have less coverage it may not suit this uh, other person. So so that's something that's a judgment call that we leave uh, up yeah. to you as uh, agents or we leave yeah. it up to the student who is going to take or their families to decide wh what is important and what is not. But there are yeah. always options in the market. Uh, it's not that one is bad and one is good. It's it's all about the lifestyle and the, the risk that they would want to take by opting a particular level of cover. And, and uh, coming to cost considerations, I think uh, uh, it's again... Uh, 
while while you're purchasing an insurance uh, one must also look into what is the cost of treatment here in australia rather than just looking at the premium as a whole thing because that's a very common thing when you go on a comparison website uh, even for buying uh, a particular shoe brand we would go yep. through oh this is the cheapest but do you really buy the cheapest shoe no you you look at the features uh, why yep. why do that with insurance we always look at premiums so i i always say that uh, don't consider the cost of insurance to be your deciding factor uh, look into what suits you what you really want uh, because it's it's a simple thing um, not many people know that if you call an ambulance in australia it would cost you close to 1300 dollars per trip yeah. whereas if a student is single and they are here uh, they would pay 692 dollars a year for their insurance so one ambulance service if they are covered plus whatever treatment they have already got their money back from that particular treatment right. and uh, not that we want them to use or you know not that we are stopping them to use but but it's good to know what what it would cost them if they don't have insurance it's it's as simple as if they go to a normal doctor to see if they are cold they have cold and flu it would cost them close to 7200 dollars for just one visit then it's followed by any multiple tests or whatever comes through that diagnosis would be another cost but it's it's not very cheap to go and see a doctor or a specialist a specialist would cost anywhere between 300 dollars for a normal yeah. one time visit uh, plus there are multiple tests and scans and things so so it's not a small thing it's it's good to understand that if they are here they only have 20 hours of work limit there they go to a specialist and a gp 400 500 dollars is gone in that week so basically what they have worked is for the doctor not for their rent or their their cost of living in australia so one must understand those factors that considering the premium is not the right way i think when with this thing i would always recommend to check and do some study behind the medical costs in australia and then compare the price what you're paying towards the premium that's the best way of do, considering the cost of any insurance provider very well said very well said yeah i mean imagining me in a situation where i have traveled as a student you know to australia and if i have to undergo something wherein some agent suggested me to opt for a very low premium rate just for the sake of it and if i let's say just to save a couple of thousand dollars on my insurance uh, premium uh, i would rather spend a, you know a grand back there uh, yes. in australia that is something which will land me into debt ultimately i do not want that as a student correct so no no def- def- definitely i mean this is a very important aspect and i think uh, as per uh, even swapnil would recommend uh, would recommend i mean these are the you know things the key features you should look in a specific order uh, you know that okay uh you should go for this first and then check this first and then check this first i'm sure uh, uh, even people must have their own way of uh, you know pur- purchasing a policy they must have their own priorities so uh, swap and i mean since we have uh, the agents from here from the offshore countries and even the onshore country uh, we would want you to give them certain tips in terms of how you know they can uh manage the health coverage for their clients or the students who are uh, approaching them so yeah if you can even uh, you know just uh, summarize it and probably explain it in a better words so that they uh, probably note down these tips and uh, maybe yeah, sure. start focusing on that yeah yeah sure uh, see uh, one one thing and uh, it's the tip is uh, most of the times once in a year there are different dates every provider would change the the prices for uh, health insurance and the cost would uh, be determined uh, each year from different providers so most of them start from april towards june that last quarter uh, the financial quarter for australia um, so she so so what happens is when the prices are changing uh, we as providers we also know what's going to impact in the oshc deed that we saw earlier and if it's something that is being changing into the insurance we would send an uh amendment or an added a uh, product sheet to inform all the agents uh, so the tip is don't just look at the price sheet that you get from a insurance provider also look at additional product information that we attach along with that uh, because that really helps you to know we do summarize in a very brief in that email body that this is what is changing and this is what would be uh, excluded uh, but please don't ignore the the emails during that time of april to june because you will get a lot of emails from different providers if you are working with multiple providers and you know things like that uh, but it's always good to keep an eye out on that communication uh, i think um, 
it's again uh, as we have covered a lot on uh, the the second point uh, that you know how to develop a strategy and ma make make sure that we we guide uh, the students to purchase the right cover uh, i think uh, there are there are few factors we always assume that they want a cheaper policy uh, so and and uh, all throughout my career whether uh, with Bupa or uh, elsewhere, insurance is not something that uh, we should assume uh, or any financial instrument for that matter. We must always consider their individual circumstances. We need to understand what their requirements is. Everybody is different. Um, somebody would have a, a real tight issue with money, uh, but we want to save a few hundred dollars or we really want them to take the risk of a few hundred thousand dollars is, is our call because if something goes wrong, um, they're not going to come to me as a provider. They would come to you that you gave me this policy. You recommended this policy. And, you know, you, you don't really want to get into that kind of a, a pit hole that you, know, you want to go back to the provider, do all that, leave your day, day job and, you know, focus on those things. So I think it's it's better to understand and let them make the decision. But we, we can, whatever we have discussed today, uh, understand their situation, make them aware what the medical costs are, tell them that th these are the options, tell them that this, this is what would be covered what is not covered let them make an informed decision rather than being in the haste of selling or referring a product and just ticking off that box that application done department we are waiting for department no i think what we should do is take a couple of minutes to make understand and give them that because then that also increases the stickiness that they will come back to you as well yeah yeah sure I mean, if you are willing to be a, you know, a reliable agent that way, uh, this is something which you should uh, definitely follow. Uh, again, a very great tip. Jumping to the next one, over sure. to you, Swapnil. And again, I think uh, we, we will cover this uh, in one of the later slides as well, but uh, I think it's it's very important for uh, from you as the counselors and the agents and the and our, and our partners uh, to, to know and fully understand what we cover and and have that confidence in the provider that once they are here we we have different touch points we have different tools if you understand that better and you feel confident and you're comfortable uh, selling that product it comes very naturally that you would recommend a, a particular health insurance to your client uh, and and that's very important and significant uh, from we as a provider perspective as well that we at Bupa want to know that we would do orientations, we would do, you know, all sorts of things that would help students understand that uh, what insurance means. And most of the things that we covered in today's presentation would be covered in much more depth and detail. But uh, that's where I think uh, you as a selling partner should be equally confident about helping them to make their decision uh, and you should be equally confident on the provider that you're working with very well said yes so uh last but not not the least uh one more tip for you guys uh swapping over to you sure uh, and i think uh see uh I, I won't go much in detail about this point but it's it's about you know again we have covered about managing their expectation understanding and circumstances but more important is uh don't misunderstand uh, any particular point. If you don't know, you know, feel free to reach out to us or to uh, compare team. And we have constant training sessions. We we go through a lot of things where we, um, you know, changes are done, uh, offers are there. Uh, there is always an element of small dissatisfaction, and you know, there is always an element of small misunderstanding that triggers the whole uh, train to derail. Um, I think the the best part is, you know, if you want to gain the trust of your clients and you don't know something, be okay to say no i don't know i'll check and come back to you uh that that just avoids the whole experience and it it doesn't impact our experience and it doesn't impact your experience as in uh partner who's selling our product um, so so that's something that i would very strongly advocate that don't be in a rush to just sell it tell it that yes it's done tick the box activity no i think if you don't know just just reach out to uh, me or or team compare if, if it's anything and uh, we can we can help you with that yeah, sure again uh, uh, very important tip you know i'm sure people uh, with uh, definitely noted down and anyways we are uh, you know recording this session for you guys so don't worry about it we'll be sharing with you so that you don't have to uh, you know uh, remember it again yeah, we will reach out to you over your inboxes thank you okay. Yeah, so great. I mean, uh, since uh, Swapnil uh, is here, uh, he's the international partnership manager uh, representing Bupa. We would like to know, you know, some, uh, you know, insights from you, Swapnil, in terms of uh, Bupa's role 
you know, in supporting the international uh, student health. So if, if you can just throw some light, light on that, we'd be really, uh, you know, happy to hear that. Yeah, sure. Um, see, um, as I said, uh, we, we do have a lot of things that we want to do and we do uh, to support students. Um, COVID is the best example. Uh, a lot of students were stuck and they were not able to go leave the country. They were not able to, uh, you know, uh, do anything. And, and that was the time when we, we experienced high volume of claims. What we have done uh, during that time is... Um, we have given uh, some premiums back to eligible customers. Uh, it could be students, it could be uh, working visitors and things like that. Now, it was not that uh, we were making a lot of money out of this, but it was just a way of giving the, giving something back because it was a really difficult situation for students and anyone uh, as a migrant to be in Australia during that point in time. Uh, we did make sure that we support our clients in any possible way we could. That's one of the small things that we've done. Uh, we, we've been supporting our students through multiple digital apps uh, for mental health. We have uh, uh, digital doctor services. So we've created we've created enough space for our students where we. Uh, th thanks, Bhavish, for bringing this up. Actually, this this is this resonates quite well. So, Blua is something that I was talking about the digital doctor yeah. service. We we launched it, uh, I think, year and a bit ago, and. Um, it, it really has given, changed the landscape of how one can go and see a doctor. It's it's 24-7. It's digital. You can book it from your phone and go to a doctor appointment at any point in time. Um, yeah. What best is what I love this is it's in language. So we have okay. more than 150 language uh, provided doctors. They are authorized Great. to work in Australia. Uh, they are certified Australian doctors. And that's where they can... Uh, really give that comfort to a particular student and individual because sometimes mm -hmm. it's hard to you know uh, dwell through what you're going through and other best part is if girls are not comfortable going and seeing a male doctor and they don't get a, much of a choice here they can actually pick to talk to a female doctor and have a consultation if something needs to be done uh, and they need to see a doctor in person this yep team of doctors would basically refer them to the nearest GP and things like that and, you know, ask them to do further investigation. We've also done pharmacy deliveries and those sort of things. So there are a lot of things that we, we do. Uh, there is unlimited cover on selected consultations, 100% coverage. Uh, we don't we don't cap it from a dollar value or number of visits they can do uh, to a doctor in, in, in a given particular year. It's not that. Uh, we have... 90% of our doctors in Australian hospitals are in Bupas coverage. We have multiple levels of cover uh, arrangements with them. We call it members first, we call it network hospitals, and so on and so forth, just to ensure that we reduce the gap if there is any going to be for the student or any uh, <coughs> health insurance uh, client. Yep. We have uh, something called MyBupa, which again makes a very good tool for... Mm -hmm. um, all the customers across uh, the health insurance. MyBupa basically makes everyone's life easier. We, they have digital membership cards, no longer required for the plastic cards. They can simply use that. We have um, claims that can be processed within three days. And uh, it's it's something that we can really get all done uh, within that time period. So, mm -hmm. so there are a lot of these things that we have, as we discussed earlier, there are no waiting periods on mental health, uh, things that we, we will look into a slide after this as well. Uh, I think this way up is another one, which yeah. which is an external uh, thing that we have done uh, to cover the well-being and the mental health program, uh, which did say to 31st uh, August, we recently got an update last week that we have got another year of extension on this program. So uh, this again needs no GP referral. If the student is not feeling well or the overseas visitor who is coming to Australia and they're not feeling too quite well mentally, they can simply go to this way up, uh, register and book a consultation or one-on-one -on -one chat with the doctors and the psychs there and they can take care of that. So you don't need to go to a GP any longer. 24-7 student helpline is amazing service that we offer. Uh, it's it's again for anything basically. When they are settling mm -hmm. in Australia, they need to they have rental issues, landlords troubling. They can simply call on the line below. We'll help them. They're working part-time, they don't know how to file taxes. They can call us. They're driving a car, 
they have an accident, they don't know what to do, they can call us. They have an, they're, they're struggling to find an accommodation, they can call us and we'll guide them through that. Uh, anything to do with uh, all these, you know, it, it's, it's again, it's in language, it covers a lot of things that we would really want uh, a student to know, but they don't know where to go, what to do. They go on Google, they can simply call us. It's again a 24-7 Bupa student advice line and it is only focused on students. So not for other visitors, but but only for students and we will help them guide them through everything that we can now what comes after this is also an aspect that you as uh, our key key partners should know what is not covered when they are taking this insurance and there is there is not a big list of that as i said we do cover anything and everything that medicare would cover so as simple as that if any procedure is not covered or recognized by medicare it's as simple as you want to look better and you want to go for a plastic surgery, Medicare doesn't cover that, so we won't. Um, anything to do with uh, experimental treatments. So if if they voluntarily choose to be a part of a particular uh, ongoing experiment, we would not be liable. And that's also those test uh, clinics, they would basically take a declaration and a signature uh, as a, a thing that they are doing it on their own responsibility and things. So we don't cover any experimental treatments and participation in that. Uh, any respite care, again, uh, that's not a part of this insurance, but any procedures that are uh, approved by Medicare uh, services or advisory committee, uh, committee will not be covered. So it has to be approved and recognized not by Medicare, but also by the uh, MSA uh, from Australia and any assisted reproductive services. So things like IVF and things, we do have different level of covers, not in the student plan, uh, because we do believe when they're coming here as a student, that's the least of the priority, but uh, anything to do with childbirth and normal pregnancy or complications relating to that would be covered. But if they want to go through the IVF path, it's not covered. Yeah. I think, uh, yes, uh, I mean, you know, thank you for uh, giving us a quick overview of how Bupa is different from, you know, the other providers in terms of what all benefits do they provide. The very good things that you mentioned, you also offer these additional support in terms of the, uh, you know, accommodation as well as uh, the other aspects when a student is, you know, uh, migrating to the different country. These are the basic, uh, you know things which they suffer from and the Bupa takes care of it. So uh, great to know that. And even in terms of the things which are not covered, I think uh, pretty much makes sense. You know, these are certain things which a student health cover uh, anyways will might not require. And as you said, if you are on a different uh, coverage, if you are having a separate plan for the, uh, this, you'll, you'll have different terms and conditions. But yeah, I mean, uh, this is pretty much clear. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Swapnil, for, uh, you know, highlighting this information for, no from, uh, for us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, guys, uh, I mean, talking about the emerging trends in international health insurance, uh, this is something uh, even we think which is going to happen. In any ways, Bupa is already, you know, trending uh, in this industry by offering some great uh, things, uh, you know, maybe even starting from this year or even in the coming future while they are planning. So I think Swapnil will be the correct person in terms of highlighting these trends. Uh, he'll be able to explain it to you, uh, you know, what is, uh, how this is going to be revolutionary in future. Over to you, Swapnil. Thanks, Raj. Yeah. Um, so, uh, see, uh, we, we'll, we'll take a very high level view on, on what it is and um, not everything that we can go in much depth and detail uh, due to obvious reasons, but um, there are certain things that we have done uh, and changed in the past and we are looking forward to uh, constantly evolve ourselves to uh, catch up with the digital landscape, especially with the I don't know which generation we are now, Z, Alpha, I don't know where we are at now that, but with all the millennial crowds, uh, when they have so much on the phones and tabs and computers and they, they, they more rely and believe on those digital uh, footprints, uh, we do have digital health cards uh, because we did realize that one, it is environment friendly. We do very uh, much have an initiative where we want to do give back to the environment and the climate and everything as well. So we, we do have made certain initiatives. We have gone uh, digital on our health cards. Uh, they are available on Androids and Apple uh, devices. So you don't need to carry a physical card in your wallet and it's on your phone wallet. Um, we do 
we do have a life reward program now this is very interesting and not many of uh, the students are aware but this is something that we constantly keep evolving and changing uh, I I'm conscious of time as well, but we'll quickly cover these points that uh, it covers a lot of things in terms of gym memberships, grocery discounts, uh, and other uh, key areas that are in Mel uh, Melbourne, Sydney, and any other tourist places where so aquariums and zoo memberships and those sort of things are discounted and it's it's something that really helps them movie tickets are discounted um so life rewards is a constant uh, evolving partner we have i think 40 plus providers uh within australia that offer these kind of discounts to exclusive bupa members moreover uh, what we are working on is a streamlined claim process because that's something that is more of a, a customer experience that we are working on so my bupa app is the best way we have uh, contact center we have uh, 64 retail stores across australia uh, one can go and make the claims there or they can simply take a photo from their phone and submit the claim on my Bupa, and we would reimburse the claims in three to five business days so it's as simple as that we are trying to do that uh, we have telehealth services for quick consultations as we covered previously we have mental health support tools and apps uh, within and externally that can really help the students to get uh, more of uh, the peace of mind and you know talk out to someone who they really uh, when they really need we have yep. uh, multilingual support not only through the helplines but also in our retail stores we have uh, we we have ensured that we can cover as many uh, in-language consultations and teams, uh, team members that can support our international uh, clientele. Uh, we have a lot of wellness programs within Bupa. So if if the student goes on my Bupa or they jump on bupa.com.au, they can find support for any wellness programs that would help them uh, when they are staying in Australia. Great, great. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, looking at, as you said, times are changing, the generation are, generations are changing, their requirements are changing. Right. So you have to adapt that. And I'm sure, I mean, if it is me, if I talk about myself, if this is something which I'm getting, I would definitely go with it. Even right. if I'm yeah, paying for my premiums, insurance premiums, on the other hand, I'm getting a lot of discounts in terms of, you know, the other facilities, which I would rather uh -huh. use. Perfectly said, uh, Bhavish, because it's, again, one more thing that we don't want, uh, you know, students or anyone in coming to Australia, just look at us as an insurance only provider. These are, the, if they live healthier and happier, it's it's good for them, good for us, good for everyone. Um, and they can use these services uh, to get some uh, discounts and premiums back. We do have other complimentary products as well that cover them for car insurance, we are just discounted, home and content insurance. As life grows and they, they move on the journey in Australia and settle down in Australia, they can also take benefits of those services. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's it's a great way of looking into uh, this as a holistic and this is from more of a customer point of view but we do we are also working uh, to support the agents and the partners uh, to and come up with some different tools and you know improving our existing commercial ways of uh, you guys referring it to your customers um, yeah. so that's also an ongoing process so it's not just from the customer point of view but from the commercial aspect also we are working behind the scenes to get a lot of things done great great I mean, uh, thank you for giving your insights, uh, Swapnil. It was very, you know, informative. Uh, okay, coming to our key takeaways of the session, guys. I'm sure everyone uh, had a very fruitful session uh, in terms of uh, very different things which we got to know today, right from the overview of health insurance requirements to the common misconceptions. What are the ideal things you should look for while you are purchasing the policy? How you can compare different policies? And how, what is the best thing that you can suggest, you know, to your students? Some uh, expert tips from uh, Swapnil also were listed down, which, uh, you know, uh, in terms of what key features you should look for uh, in purchasing the policy. And lastly, we also saw the emerging trends, which uh, anyways, Bupa is already following. So these were a quick, this was a quick summary for you guys, uh, you know, while we are about to conclude this session. Uh, before we do that, uh, just a quick uh, introduction of, so us, who are we? Uh, as I said, Bhavesh, I am basically representing Konze India. And uh, we would like to throw some light on that. So Konze is basically all about uh, building exceptional SaaS-based solutions to reform education and immigration industry. Uh, we have always been uh, working alongside with education and immigration industry, assuring that uh, you know we are able to empower them 
in terms of giving them, you know, by providing them different tools, SaaS-based solutions, so that a lot of work can be reduced. They are uh, also, you know, able to undergo this uh, technological revolution, ultimately for their betterment, ultimately, you know, uh, for their profitability. And these are some quick, uh, you know, solutions uh, just to list down in front of you, which Conze provides. Uh, we have Convesk, which is basically a uh, industry-specific smart intuitive CRM. Uh, you know, a lot of people uh, from offshore, onshore countries are already using it. Now, Compair is something which allows you to compare the different policies. You know, if you are looking to purchase a policy for Australia, be it OSHC or be it OVHC, you have all the major players listed down there. You can just go there and check all the comparisons at one go. We have Consign, which is basically an e-signature platform with the document management system. Ultimately, allows you to go paperless and uh, leave behind the you know traditional methods of managing how you manage your signatures in the industry. Uh, we also have one uh, Australia-specific product again, which is Search My Ensco. Uh, ultimately, the people who are uh, willing to go after graduation or even people who are onshore, if they want to check the occupational eligibility of a particular student or a particular client. This is the correct tool for you, giving you a lot of other insights as well. So just to you know list down it for you and anyone who is actually willing to know more about these products, we would be happy to book a demonstration for either of these products uh, you know, uh, for you guys. Feel free to reach out to us. But yeah, I mean, uh, before we receive, while we receive any such questions, so it was really nice having you today, man. You were uh, a kind of an expert who, you know, led us through the a lot of things which were uh, not clarified and i'm sure even for the agents uh, they must have uh, got to know about a lot of things in detail so that they can guide their clients they can guide their students in a proper manner ultimately making them more reliable you know while they are purchasing or you know uh, any particular policy be it for the visitors be it for the students Th thank you, Bavish. It was indeed a pleasure. Uh, thanks for inviting me and uh, having me uh, today. Uh, it was indeed a, a great pleasure. Uh, it has been always working with you guys. So uh, always happy to help. And yeah, uh, again, you were really great audience. We really appreciate your patience, guys, uh, throughout the session. Uh, we had a lot of great interaction at the very initial, uh, or, you know, initial stage of the session as well. So it was lovely hosting you today. We will be hosting some really good webinars, uh, you know, in the coming months as well. Uh, these informative sessions for you, and we would really want you guys to be part of it. So stay updated. You can even follow our page on Instagram, Conze. You can check our LinkedIn. You can even uh, check our website, and uh, you know, you'll be uh, assured that okay, you are updated with all the industry uh, specific trends. So great, uh, guys. The weekend definitely conclude our uh, today's session. Thank you once again. Thank you, Swapnil. Uh, wishing you a great day ahead and a great evening to you, Swapnil. For the people who are in Australia, maybe you can proceed with your dinner. And the people who are back in the Asian countries, you can, uh, you know, straight away go to your lunch if, if there is something which you're missing. Nice having you all. Thank you. Thank you, Bhavish. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Take care.